Hey guys, it's Marshy here with a moment of mindfulness. And um, I had a different topic scheduled for this week, but I decided to shift it um, after hearing about the loss of Moy Barron, one of our teachers at Richmond Montessori School. Um, so I hope you guys um, get something out of this, and I hope it's helpful. But I really just wanted to talk about grief um, for a little bit. Um, I wasn't fortunate enough to fortunate enough to work with Mui, but um, I know that she was so well loved by her students and her colleagues. And um, I do know grief really well. And although I can't make your grief go away, um, and I can't help you get rid of it, I'm hoping I can give you a couple of tools just to get through it, um, because that's kind of the way you have to go with grief. You have to go right through the middle of it. So one of the things you might experience right now um, is panic. And panic attacks are involuntary, they're uncomfortable, and they appear just completely without warning. Um, you might feel a tightness in your chest, you might feel rapid breathing, you might feel your heart beating faster, you might feel nausea, you might feel dizzy, um, completely out of control. For me, um, I don't really get the uh, quintessential shortness of breath when I have panic attacks, but I do feel completely emotionally disoriented. My heart beats super fast, and um, I feel just completely out of control. Um, so just note that you might have some of those symptoms and not all of them, and that can still be a panic attack. Um, when it comes to panic attacks, the first thing we have to do is calm your body. And the best way to do that is by controlling your breath. So breathing in for four seconds, one, two, three, four, breathing out for four seconds, one, two, three, four, and just slowing down your breathing is going to change the physiological response in your body. Um, and that's the best and quickest way to do that. Then what we like to do are grounding exercises. So finding five things to look at and noticing them. And then finding four things to smell. And finding three things to hear. And finding two things to touch. And finding one thing to taste. And just kind of bringing awareness to all of your senses during that time. I like to think of grief as waves in an ocean. So if you think about the fact that they can hit you so hard and then there are times where you feel fine and then it hits you again. That's exactly what grief feels like. And there are periods of time where you feel completely okay. And actually the more time that passes, generally the longer these get. And a lot of times even the waves don't feel as painful anymore. Um, sometimes they do. Sometimes they feel just as bad as that first day. Um, but the trick, if there ever was a trick to dealing with grief, is learning how to ride the wave. So I like to use mantras basically just to get through those periods of really difficult time during those big waves that you have. Um, and what some of my favorite mantras are, I'm stronger than the waves of my grief. I'm stronger than the waves of my grief. And the other one I really like is my intense pain means I'm capable of great love. So a lot of times we like to categorize our feelings as good and bad. Um, and because you're feeling pain and grief right now, it doesn't mean that it's a bad feeling. It means that you're human and that you care. And I think those are really important qualities to carry forward in your life. Maybe neither of these mantras feel right for you. And if that's the case, I really hope that you'll go and you'll try to find or create one a mantra that makes you feel empowered and a mantra that makes that it that is just totally meaningful for you because grief is such a personal journey and it's hard you know for all of us to get through um 
but it's a journey that you're strong enough to handle. And I know, I know that for a fact. 